brothers and sisters, um, I was in the habit of the last few years of praying to God for a saint uh, for the year and a word from God for the year to be, the, the new year. And this year, I, um, I, I've been really drawn to St. Padre Pio, probably because I'm coming, I've come to Italy and please God, I'll make the pilgrimage to San Giovanni in Rot Tondo, San Giovanni Rotondo, sorry, where Padre Pio lived and, you know, for, I heard hours and hours a day of confession with that gift he had of reading souls. And so many people would come to him from, from all over Italy and across Europe and the world um, where he would help unburden them of their sin. You know, he would remind them of things that they forgot. You know, just preparing them for that encounter with the Lord that, that, that they would be totally cleansed and reconciled with God and they would see that in the beauty of God's being and his truth when they meet him at death and that they would have received God's infinite love and mercy and reconciliation and and his words encouraging them to make reparation by doing penances and you know just to, to make atonement for for their past sins so saint Padre pio as we know um is an amazing saint um who you know only died in the 60s and is very close to us you could say in terms of history we know people who are alive today who met him i lived with a brother in newbridge who went to confession to him once as a young priest from Rome. And so it's not somebody remote and in the past or, or that we're tempted to say that, that his life is a bit legendary or a bit of myth. The things that we read about his life were experienced by people still alive today. Very much like we could read the gospels and the witnesses of St. Luke and St. Paul and their experiences of Christ and, and, and of the gospel. And, and, and you know, they, they experienced these things and they communicated it to us. Maybe in a thousand years, people will look back on reading Lives of Padre Pio and be like, oh, that, that's like, that's just legendary stuff. That couldn't have happened. And yet God does impossible things all the time. He does amazing things to wake us up, that there's something alive. So coming to St. Padre Pio, you know, the saints are interpreters of, of a profound experience of God that, that, that echo, please God, in our own lives. You know, um, I'm in the habit now of asking people, of their own personal testimonies about prayer, about their experiences after receiving the Eucharist. And I'm amazed at, 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 at the experiences that are happening out there so quietly in our church, in, in, in our interior life. And I suppose we're, these things are private, so we're not as quick to share about them with others and etc. cetera. But, but God's alive. And that's the point, you know, that he, he's moving in, in hearts that are at prayer that are prayer, hearts that are seeking union with him. And, you know, Padre Pio experienced profound different states and spiritual states. And, and there's a letter he writes to this guy, Father Augustino, and I want to read it because it's just absolutely beautiful. And it captures an intimate life with Padre Pio and God. And I think reading these saints can inspire us, can, can spark fire into our weary hearts at times, or call us, they're demanding, they, they call us to go higher, they call us to go forward. We won't always experience these things, and these things that many of these saints experience, or even people we know experience, are not necessary. What's necessary is faith in God, faith in Christ, bold hope, trusting in Him, and, and a love of Him, and following Him, and that's what's necessary. You know, many amazing saints have reached the top, experienced no big dramatic stuff, but sometimes other saints say this, they, they, it's just his interior life for Christ that I want to read that, that is very touching. And he says that, I feel in my heart a great desire to tell you many things, all of them which regard Jesus, but I can't express myself and my sight does not help me. Only God knows what sweetness I experienced yesterday. So this, this idea of sweetness of God, that we can forget and taste and see that the Lord is good, that he's sweet. St. Thomas Aquinas defines, you know, wisdom as this taste of God, this gift of the Holy Spirit that, you know, comes from the Latin sapientiae, which comes from the word sapor, which is to taste. So, so wisdom, the gift of the Holy Spirit is a taste of God. It's, 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 it's a beautiful experience of God. And he's speaking about this sweetness that he experienced on the Feast of St. Joseph. And he said it was especially after Mass in his communion. And he says, My head and my heart were burning with a fire which did me good. My mouth tasted all the sweetness of the immaculate flesh of the Son of God. So he's talking about his Eucharistic communion. Think of those beautiful words. That, that my mouth tasted all the sweetness of the immaculate flesh of God. The, that, that, that close union of flesh to flesh, which is the whole point of love that God gives us his flesh. My mouth tasted all this, I'm sorry, he goes on. Oh, at this moment when I still feel almost all of its sweetness, if I could only bury within my heart these consolations, I should certainly be in paradise. How happy Jesus makes me. How sweet is his spirit. But I'm confused and can do nothing but weep and repeat, Jesus, my food. 
What distresses me most is that I repay all this love of Jesus with so much ingratitude. This is a true encounter with God. Often authentic experiences with God leave us with a real sense of our how far we fall short, how much we could really do for God that we fail to do. You know, the ingratitudes that we have that he's expressing it. And he goes on. He continues to love me and to draw me closer to himself. These beautiful words, this truth that Christ loves us and is drawing us to himself. To, to feel being drawn by Christ. Feel that in your bones, that we are, we are desired by Christ, by his heart. He has forgotten my sins and one would say that he remembers only his own mercy. Isn't that beautiful? The, the our root of our confidence, God's loving mercy. Each morning he comes into my poor heart and pours out all the effusions of his goodness. I would like it if it were in my power to wash with my blood those places in which I committed so many sins, where I scandalized so many people, but a praise be the mercy of Jesus. So brothers and sisters, may you experience